Well, 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 here we are again. Um, hello, everybody from near and far. Um, thank you so much for joining all of us for uh, this Tibetan basics class. Um, it's okay, we have a, um, a small intimate group. Um, that's good, you're going to learn faster. <laughs> um, you just have to stay in the class. Um, some of you have taken my class before. Um, that's also okay. Um, I don't know, how many times did I take Geshe's class? I think I took it five times. Um, and on like the fifth time or the sixth time, I had the class memorized, including his jokes. So <laughs> I was like, okay, if I have the jokes memorized, I can teach now. Um, so I just started teaching it. Um, and it's, it's a worthwhile venture, um, this language, this language class. And we're going to talk about why. Um, but I just feel happy that everyone made it. And I want to preemptively thank our translators. Yay! Um, I've tried to study all the languages that they're translating. Um, and they're all hard. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their challenges and difficult. Oscar is very good to um, correct my Spanish anytime I talk to him. Thank you, Oscar. Um, <laughs> Tang Tang, Tang Tang acts like I, my Chinese doesn't need correcting, but then she just doesn't understand me. So that's okay too. Thank you, Tang Tang. Um, and I don't even try with Russian, okay? Um, <laughs> One second, technical question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm also doing the technical side. One second. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me. Mm -hmm. I think that answers question, your question. Um, if you need other technical assistance, just direct message me in the chat here. Okay, um, so the reason I'm holding this class, um, the way we're doing it uh, today is um, I'm interested in teaching the class to whomever uh, wants to learn how to pronounce correctly and um, read correctly um, the Tibetan language. And so, if um, I'm offering it in the three languages, um, Russian, Chinese, and Spanish, um, if there's other people who are interested and we need to find translators um, in different languages, um, we can probably make it happen. Um, as for now, we're doing it in those three languages in English, my mother tongue. And so, um, but the point is to enable literacy in Tibetan. I'm part of a project called the Diamond Cutter Classics Project, also known as the Mixed Nuts. Oh yeah, my name's Word, by the way, if you don't know that. I think you all do. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Word, if you want, um, sounds fancier. Um, and I've been translating in part of that project for, six years and it's an incredible project in um translating all of the or as many as we can um texts um from the tibetan language into english um from a particular tradition mostly buddhist as you're all aware of and mostly in the tradition of jason kappa as you are probably aware of as well and so i do that fact um and the amount of books that we have, which is in the order of like 300,000 <laughs> or something, it's a lot. So um, there's currently 12 Mixed Nuts translators, I think. I think there's 12 of us. Um, I guess 13, if you include um, our eminent teacher, Geshe Michael Roach. And so I don't know, do that math. What's um, 
twelve into three hundred thousand. Okay, that's like two thousand and something, something, something. Um, basically, um, and I'm on my second book in six years. <laughs> okay, so that means I would have to translate. We all have to translate at a thousand books. Um, no, for a thousand years. So, okay, the math is pretty simple. We need more translators. And <clears throat> even if you're not gonna be a translator, um, but you are studying this tradition, it's amazing seeds to, to study. Um, and actually it's really fun too, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, it's seven in the morning where I am. I don't know what time it is where you are. Uh, it's about that time where Oscar is. If you're up this early, to study an alphabet, you're probably into it, okay? Um, and you think maybe, I, I can't be a translator, but if you're already in this class, you are um, this far <laughs> from being a translator. It seems far away because you're not it yet, but mm, you're very, very, very close in some capacity. And, and whatever capacity you can do it for now, you should do it, okay? If you're interested. If you're not interested, then you should do something else, <laughs> something that's fun for you and, and virtuous in your way, okay? Um, all right. Um, okay, so... Before we get into like the class itself, I wanted to go into some logistics. And the main logistical question is, when is a good time to hold these classes? And it's kind of impossible. We all have different schedules. We all have, you know, places to be, um, responsibilities, um, people or things to take care of. And so, in a way, it's impossible to get a perfect time for the classes. And I understand that. But I want to find a basically a general time for each geographic region or language, um, as it were, that um, works for the people in that group. Um, if everyone can make it at this time, we can just do it together now. I thought there was going to be a few more people but I didn't realize there was actually um, a few other programs going on as well um, for Geshe Michael students in particular. So um, maybe after those programs let out, some more people will be able to join us. But if they don't, and it's just us, then we can just pick a time that works for us and move forward together. Um, this is about the ninth time I've taught this class or something you're like the ninth group um Oscar has come to about six of them <laughs> right Oscar this Tibetan's getting really good he um he's taking good notes during the mixed nuts good job Oscar um so you can take the class more than once that's a good idea <clears throat> but this is about the ninth time I'm teaching the class and so I pretty much got it down and I know what it takes to learn the basic alphabet and pronunciation. And the first time I taught Oscar, it took six weeks, four times a week, right Oscar? It was something like that. Yeah, he's concentrating, I'm distracting him. Um, so this class is designed to be about eight weeks long it's basically between now and the next mixed nuts session. Um, the dates for the session have not been finalized um, because our, um, my teacher is very busy and that's what happens sometimes. Um, but it's gonna be sometime mid to late January, like, um, I don't know, January 20th or something. And so um, today's November 3rd. So that is approximately 11 weeks, I don't know, um, from today. And so we have between now and then. Um, and I would like to 
get who, all of you, whoever comes to the class, um, able to read and pronounce by then. So that's the intention for the class. That's the um, general goal. And it's totally possible. Um, yeah, with Oscar's group, it took about six weeks, um, but we had a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, in the middle there, it feels like, uh, wow, are we ever gonna figure this out? And then by the end, um, I think everyone in the class could read every Tibetan syllable, you know, and um, and they're all still doing it. <laughs> um, let me see, maybe not all of them, but <laughs> the ones I know of can still pronounce all the syllables. How about that? So that's a good feeling, and I want to pass that knowledge on to you. And the more people I teach who speak other languages, then you can. Um, go on to teach people in your language, your mother tongue as well, or any other languages you know. I taught a Russian group um, three years ago. Um, is anybody here from that group? No. Um, and one of them now, yeah, teaches, um, I think maybe in Russian or Ukrainian, I'm not sure. Um, but they're very adept and they're doing quite well. So, um, and that's what I wanted to happen. I wanted to teach at least one person that would teach other people in their language because um, then it spreads. And the reason that we're doing this is because in those 300,000 books or whatever the number is, there is untold secrets, okay? <laughs> When I was in college um, and first learning about Buddhism, um, people would always talk about the Himalayas and Tibet and all this like mystic knowledge and all this ancient knowledge. And it was very, um, yeah, very mystic and very, you know, spiritual and kind of like seemed very difficult to grasp. And like, how would I ever learn those things? Would I have to go? climb those peaks, you know? Um, would I have to, you know, spend years looking for teachers in, in the mountains? It's like, no, now we have Zoom. <laughs> you can learn in your pajamas. I mean, I, I don't know if you're all wearing your pajamas, but I suspect you are. Um, you know, for the Zoom meeting, you just need a shirt. <laughs> and this is good. You do not have to um, hike the Himalayas uh, anymore. Uh, you can if you want, but uh, I think it's cold and dangerous. Um, your house is warm and comfortable. And so uh, it's an amazing opportunity for, um, all of us, we have this technology. Uh, one of my teachers said, uh, um, oh, you don't think you have yogic powers, but you can already fly, uh, contact anyone in the world, anywhere. Um, and basically all the information in the whole, in human history is available to you in 0.23 seconds. <laughs> and you're like, no, but I need a plane to fly. I need Zoom to contact people. And I need Google to uh, find out information. That means you are one step this far away from doing it without those things. And you, you think that's ridiculous, um, but it's not, it's true. The karma to be able to pay, I don't know, 250 bucks and end up in China in 20 hours or something. It's very close to the karma of just being able to teleport without the plane, okay? And the karma to have someone teach you language while you're in your pajamas at home is very close to being able to understand all the world's languages. Okay, maybe it's gonna take you a couple 
more decades or something, but that's nothing. It's nothing. Where were you 20 years ago? Right? Like that. And 20, 20 more like that. So just we say in, in American English, you know, buckle up, <laughs> just enjoy the ride. Um, okay, so that's part of my spiel. Um, so time-wise, is um, does this time work for everybody? Um, you're all in different parts of the world, so I'm going to accommodate you. If I need to teach more than one class, I will. I will teach a Chinese class, a Russian class, a Spanish class. I will teach all of them. How long is each class? Great question. Um, the, classes, the classes are about an hour each. After about an hour of language class, people's brains shut down and they start to nod off, especially with my bad jokes. It's bad. <laughs> um, yeah, each class about an hour. I'd rather do, um, I found it's better to do frequent classes um, in short amounts for a language than long classes once in a while. So I could do a class once a week that was two hours or something. I'd rather do about an hour, like about four times a week. And that's the best way. And then you give your brain a break a few days and you can study on your own. To me, that's the best method. I mean, in the beginning, later you have to do immersion and that hurts your brain and I'm sorry. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Plant better seeds, okay. Um, so time-wise, put it in the chat now. Okay. Um, Analia says um, 1800 hours PST or thereabouts. Okay, that's in the evening. I'm not sure that's gonna work for me and the family. Cameron says this time works for him, thank you. Where are you, Cameron? Chicago? Well, I was in Portland, but I'm visiting family in Louisiana, so. Oh. For a few months. Oh, that's cool. Where are you, Baton Rouge? Um, about, yeah, I'm about 20 minutes from Baton Rouge. I'm in Walker. Oh, cool. Good for you. I've been through there once. Hmm. Participants request live transcript. Okay, I'm going to enable. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat, um, looking at the times. Okay, we have a few who say now is good. Someone asked if there's a recording. Yes, there is a recording. And I also made this whole playlist. What did I call it? Tibetan Made Easy for YouTube. So um, honestly, I recommend my teacher's class. <laughs> I recommend Geshe Michael's class above my own. Um, he taught a class in like, I don't know, like 1995 or something. <laughs> That's the class I use. That's my favorite one. He also taught some classes um, via the Tibetan language channel, um, the one that the Mixed Nuts uses. Um, and those classes are also good. They're not my fave, but that because they're worse, it's just, I like to look at old VHSs. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's what the 90s classes are. So I have both of those classes, the series he did for the Tibetan language channel and the classes he did, um, which 
or I guess from VHS in a playlist amongst other things. So um, yeah, I mean, if you really wanna learn this, I mean, I just listen to the classes over and over like every day <laughs> until I had to memorize. So if you really wanna learn language, um, but I also didn't talk to anyone for about 10 years or something <laughs> to learn Tibetan. <laughs> Um, I don't recommend that, but you can try. Um, okay, I'm getting a lot. This time works. Um, okay, fine. We'll do it this time. Um, and yeah, there will be recordings. We're recording this now, but I don't know. I'm boring compared to Geshe. You watch his classes. Um, but it's it is good if you can make it live because then I can bother you and check your pronunciation. Marianne smiles when I said I can bother you. I'm good at bothering her. Um, I'm half joking, but I can check your translation. Um, make sure your pronunciation is good. And it's fun. I mean, this class is also just to have fun. I mean, we all just get to have time together. Um, it's good. You know, we can help each other. Um, a great spiritual master once said, we're two or more gathered. Um, and it means uh, if you can join as a group, what's the full verse? We're two or more gathered in my name, I believe. Um, but if you can join as a group and work together for a common cause, um, it is much more powerful. I mean, it's unbelievably powerful. Um, most humans can't work together that well as a group. I'm very bad at it. I'm very bad. Ask any of the mixed nuts. <laughs> They'll tell you. I'm very bad. Um, but if you can... If you can, it's it's very powerful. You will make waves. They had, did these studies where people in a city would pray together. I think they did it in Washington, DC a few times. Um, and they would pray for peace or something. And every time they did it, the crime rate went down <laughs> in the city. I'm sure you can find it online or something. Um, and not just once, many times. Um, and so you can say it's a coincidence, but um, everything's like that. You, can, you never know the cause of anything. So if you have good coincidences, I would continue them um, regardless of your ability to determine its causation. Okay, so class will be at this time and for all languages, unless uh, another request is made um, later on and the class will remain open. I mean, it can remain open the whole time. People can join um, throughout, but it will um, about after week, like two or three, it becomes harder to join. Um, and the class will be about one hour. Uh, maybe we go over sometimes, maybe shorter sometimes, but <laughs> excuse me. So 7.30 to 8.30 and on the west coast of North America, right? Um, that, I don't know, it should matter for almost anyone, but currently I think I'm, we're on daylight savings and I think that switches this weekend. So if that matters for anybody, I think it won't affect anyone except Arizona and Hawaii if you're there because they don't observe daylight savings. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Any other questions before I start the intro material? No. Nope. Good. Marianne, why are you taking this class again? You like being tortured? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just good to to go over it again. Yeah, you're you're that kind of person. 
you're one of these thorough people who wants to really learn things. <laughs> I'm really not that kind of person. I was, I, it's my past life. I have some seeds for a good memory. That's it. I'm very lazy <laughs> when it comes to studying. <laughs> I don't know what Joe did, but he's a good guy. Not, not like this word, dude. All right. Um, we are going to start the class now. Oh, someone asked a relevant question. How can I get the recording? Um, well, it's, I don't know. We are still working out some of the technical um, um, stuff for the class, but this is currently being recorded to the cloud. So we're gonna put it somewhere. We're still deciding what platform. So I should know by next class on Monday what that is. Okay, thanks for the question, Ruko. Sorry, I'm not that good at the logistical stuff. You could say I hate it, <laughs> but hate's a strong word. All right, um, here we are, Tibetan alphabet. Chapet Nanjong, that means welcome. Um, okay, so let's just start. I might do some of this again on Monday because more people might join, but if not, here we go. Um, this is what we're doing. We are, we are learning the Tibetan alphabet. Um, so you can pronounce every Tibetan syllable correctly. So Tibetan is a pretty normal language. Normal in this case doesn't mean uh, regular. It means the rules have been normalized. Meaning if you learn the rules of pronunciation, can you pronounce a word you've never seen before correctly? And in Tibetan, it's about, I don't know. I think Eshla says 93%. My feeling is about 87%, but <laughs> there's no way to really know without checking every word. So we'll say 90%, okay? From my perspective, um, normal. So meaning about 10% are some kind of weird exception that someone has to teach you how to pronounce individually, meaning there's no way to know otherwise. Um, and um, if you ever have the honor of learning Sanskrit, um, it is 100% normal. That's why they call it Sanskritam, Sanskrita. It means the well put together language. Um, Tibetan's pretty good at 90%. Um, English is about 50%, okay, in pronunciation. So meaning, meaning every time you try to pronounce a word, it's 50-50 that you're gonna say it wrong, okay? I think it's funny when people are like, correcting your pronunciation in English, like for a word you never heard. It's just like, there's no way to know unless you were reading the dictionary. The dictionary has these little marks that tells you how to pronounce it. But then my question is like, well, why don't they just write it in those dictionary things? Why do they, I never understood that. Um, the Koreans are very smart. They threw out their whole alphabet. They're like, this is a mess, we're done just like 20 years ago or something, 40 years ago. They were just like, they just threw it out and they made a very simple alphabet. I think Hangul, um, super simple. You can learn it in like an afternoon. Just, I think English should be thrown out. <laughs> the spelling should be thrown out. Uh, they say Tibetan is the hardest language to spell. Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, I haven't studied a harder language to spell. Um, it's very hard. There's a lot of silent letters. And that's why if you come in the mixed nuts, you're, you have no idea what's going on half the time. Cause you're like, what word are you talking about? You said um, ying, but the word on the board on the screen is D-B-Y-I-N-G-S. And that's ying, how? Um, so that's what we're learning in the class. So you'll learn how to distinguish the subtle sounds properly. Um, and Tibetan's pretty cool. It hasn't changed as much as English has changed in the same amount of time. 
Um, at this stage in a class, Geshe Michael would, would quote Chaucer from, where was Chaucer alive? I don't know, 1500s or something. Um, and you would have no idea what he was saying, right? Even if you try to read Shakespeare, which is fairly similar to our modern English, um, it's still very difficult, right? Um, although Shakespeare is difficult for other reasons too, right? Anyway, Tibetan um, hasn't changed as much as English has changed in some same amount of time. There's some changes. Yeah, it's literally the originally the language of nomads and yak herders by some stroke of amazing karma, it's been able to preserve the Dharma um, in, an, in an extraordinary fashion for about a thousand years. Um, okay. Um, there it is. I already said most of this stuff. Um, there's about 300,000 books. Um, Tibetan is extraordinary. And it's, it's the biggest religious canon in the world, in, in known history. Canon means all the books that are used by a particular religion, right? So if you study Islam, you study the Quran. If you study Christianity, you study the books of the Bible, New and Old Testament. You know, if you study Judaism, you study the Torah and um, other texts, you know, like that. Those are the canons for each of those um, religions. You know, so I don't know. Christianity's got like one book or something, which is fine. It's a great book, bestseller of all time, okay? But Tibetan Buddhism, or Buddhism is commented on Tibetans and translated from other languages has like 300,000. And the and they're good too. They're not like, ah, that book's like, okay. They're all amazing in the sense of they're transmitting these ideas that are incredible. You might not be interested in all of them for whatever reason, but the ideas contained in them are, are incredible. So that's why we need more translators. Um, I already said that, okay. All right, I guess we'll start. We're, I'm gonna plant some seeds, right? Here we go. Word is consciously planting seeds to master the Tibetan language via you all. Thanks for coming to class. Um, here's the Tibetan alphabet. Okay, when we say alphabet, we use this term not in a technical fashion. Technically, oh, I always forget, I think it's a abugida, meaning it's a language where the sounds, the sound of the word, the sound of the letter and the letter itself are the same thing. So in English, we have an alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, D, E, G, L, V, that whole thing. And each letter has its own name and it's not necessarily how that letter is pronounced, right? If you are saying the word, um, jungle, you don't say J jungle, right? But it starts with a J. So the letter J is pronounced most of the times as J, J. So when you see it, you're supposed to pronounce a jungle. But if you talk about it, you say J. But if you write J out, it's J A Y. <laughs> That is very confusing and difficult. If you are an English speaker, you're used to it. So you're like, no problem. Um, Tibetan, the letter is ka, and it is spelled ka, and it's pronounced ka, all the same. So instead of learning three things, you only learn one. All right? Um, so that is very beneficial and it does make it easier. So, and we'll talk about vowels and things later, but every Tibetan letter 
excuse me, has a ah uh sound in it already, okay? And that is represented by the letter A. So here we have the Tibetan letter. And this is a version of Tibetan called Uchen. Say Uchen. 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 Yeah. Uh, what does U mean? Zero dollars. <laughs> related to the Giku or it's in Giku. Um good guess though. Stop you. Huh? Stop you, stop you. No, what does ooh mean? The the word ooh in Tibetan. Maybe no one knows. It's okay. Uh, you've heard it many times. Ooh means um it literally it means head or center. Um if you're learning the pen, you're learning uma. Okay, it's called middle way. U means middle in Tibetan. So uma is middle way. Uma um, tengyurpa. Tengyurpa is prasangika um, madhyamika in Sanskrit, meaning the higher school of the middle way. Those people who speak sarcastically and hope it helps you. <laughs> anyway, um, so U also means head. It's the honorific for head. Go means head, um, if you talk about your own head, right? Um, so this line on top of each of these uh, letters is called a U or a head. And it's similar to the Sanskrit. If you write it, each letter will have a line on top and then you write the line, then you write the letter. In English, we put a line on bottom and you're supposed to write on, you know, and when you learn to handwrite in first, second, third grade, you write on that line. But Sanskrit is the line is on top. And so Tibetan language was designed from Sanskrit um, by a um, holy, holy, holy being named Tunmi Samboda. Um, he walked to India <laughs> 1,000 years ago from the mountains. And most of his friends died on the walk because they weren't used to the elevation and the jungle and stuff. And uh, I think he was to India for like 10 years or something. But in 10 years, he became some like, basically Geshe, high sage. And they called him Samboda, which means uh, like the great Tibetan or something. Um, and he, designed this language. He made this language, he made these letters. Um, that's why it's similar in organization and, and the shapes are similar to Tibetan, okay? So the shapes of the Tibetan letters are, are from Sanskrit. It's considered related. The sounds are not, the sounds are debatably related to Chinese, um, but there's a debate, okay? Okay, so the line on top is called U. Um, and Chen means to have. So all of these have a, a line on top. The line for the Wa is, is right in the middle of this left part. If you want to know, when you write the Wa, you write a little line. If I say Ume, what does that mean? If U Chen means has a line, Ume means what? No one knows. No, no line. One. Yeah, who said that? Someone said that. Yeah, Marianne said, but someone else. <laughs> someone said it. <laughs> Marianne said it. Uh, yeah, yeah, may means not or without, I suppose. Um, so ume means it doesn't have a line. So there's a way to write cursive. Sometimes Geshe writes cursive for people and um, and people put it on their wall and frame it. <laughs> um, but when you write cursive in Tibetan, it's called ume, and you can write it faster. So, you know, I think, uh, yeah, Chinese has many, many calligraphy styles and 
ways to write characters as well. So, you know, it basically comes on the font. There's different fonts. And this is Uche as a head. Okay, um, cool. So if someone asks you what you're learning in Tibetan class with Word, you're gonna sound fancy when you say Uchen, okay? <laughs> you gotta put your lips like this, Uchen, okay? All right, all right, let's learn the first letter of the Tibetan alphabet. Um, say Ka. Ka. So the way the letters are organized is in a column and row system similar to Sanskrit. The columns represent the way in which the sound is uh, said or emanated, I don't know, the way it comes out of your mouth. And the rows represent from what part of your mouth um, the sound is made. And that column and row system goes down to here, okay? Minus wa, all right? And then it switches to a, just a slightly different system, which is these rows, okay? Excuse me. So when I say columns, I'm referring to the first five rows, minus wa. These first five rows, all right? So if I say, you say sixth row, these are gonna to hang together with a specific sound. Seventh row is gonna to hang together with a specific sound. And the eighth row, although it is only half a row, hangs together. When I say column, it refers to, and it's color coded, okay? Someone made this wonderful chart on Wikipedia and I adapted it for my class and then some lovely students of mine who I forced to <laughs> made this PowerPoint. <laughs> now nah, they didn't have to, but I said I wouldn't teach them again until they did it. So <laughs> they did. Um, okay, and so these are the columns. They're color coded, right? Hopefully that makes it easier for you, All right? And the first column is what we call unaspirated. So what unaspirated means is you don't issue much air. You don't go, now English, German, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, Russian, um, in every language, pretty much, I've learned except little Hindi, I know, um, is aspirated, meaning, and so therefore, every word is aspirated. So therefore, um, you don't even know what it means when I say aspirated. I tried to explain this to somebody and they actually got a little upset at me. <laughs> they said, I don't talk like that. Um, I'm like, you do, you just don't know. <laughs> Because if I transpose it, listen, the way we talk, if you put your hand in front of your face, you feel air touching your hand in your mother tongue, whatever it is. Everyone in this class is mother tongue. Unless your mother tongue is like Hindi or Gujarati, and I don't know. Okay? But if you say, ka, correctly, with your hand in front of your face, say, ka, 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 ka. It's like a little clucking sound in the back of your throat. And that is called unaspirated, meaning you will not feel a little burst of air come forward, come forth. There is air used because unless you are speaking a clicking language, um, like the Khoisan people or something, you need air to make the noises for your words, right? If you click, you don't need that. I don't know any clicking languages. That'd be fun to learn though. Um, so this whole column is made like that, unaspirated. 
Okay, so the first letter is ka. And that comes from the back of your throat. So it's called guttural. Okay. The second letter is cha. And that comes when your tongue is put on not far back on the roof of your mouth, but on the roof of your mouth, what we call the palate. So that's called palatal. Excuse me. Next is th, and that's when your tongue is basically just behind your teeth, and that's called dental. One second, I got a situation with my cold here. Hold on. Thank you. Um, so ta is dental. It happens just behind the teeth. And that's why it's called dental. Next is um, ba and is labial and it's made with the lips. Next, it's got a fancy name, a forget. You don't need to know that, but it's basically like a little explosion. It's ta. Ta, ta. They have this sound in, excuse me. Mm. They have this sound in Mandarin Chinese, like the word um, herb or grass is tao. They have this sound in Russian, um, like tsar. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly in Russian, but in English we say tsar, like when we spell it C Z. Okay. So um, I don't think it's in German. It's not in Spanish. Um, so that it'll be new to you. So it's tsa, 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 tsa. Just the tongue moves on the um, roof of the mouth. Oh. And that's the first rep, excuse me, the first column. Ka, cha, ta, pa, ta. Okay, I'm gonna start bothering you. Marianne. Yeah. Let's, let's hear it first. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> she, she doesn't need this class, she's just coming because she's one of those people who wants to get better at everything she does. Mary, what do you do for a living? What do you, for work? Or... I'm, I'm working in, in the, uh, the head office of a restaurant. Mm. And my second job is to be a secondary translator and the translator for all the, all the stuff. Oh, okay. So. How many languages do you speak? Um, mainly just English. Okay. Little France, but just very, very little Spanish, but uh, mainly English and German. Ein bisschen Französisch? Ein bisschen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember my German. Okay. Um, okay, you try the next one too then. Here we go. Ciao. Perfect. Ciao. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Stop. Perfect. May you translate many books. Um, <laughs> okay. Cameron, you want to try? Sure. You can call you Cam for short. What's that? You can call you Cam for short, or yeah, you can. However you like. Okay. Um, <laughs> see how we see how it goes. Just ask me. Um, Ka. Nice. Try this one. Cha. Perfect. Ta. 
Perfect. Pa. Nice. Sa. Nice. Very good. Yay. Um, sometimes with the za, it kind of ends up sounding more like za, like a S. Um, honestly, I think Tibetans do that too. <laughs> So don't feel too bad about it, but it's supposed to have more of a Z, like a sa. More of a T before the Z. Ta, ta, ta. Sa. Like ta, ta. Like, well, ta. you said it perfect. You don't worry about it, but um, I don't know. I think when you start speaking fast, that's what happens, but you did well. Okay, we can pick on a couple more people. Um, then we'll wrap up for today. Um, Catherine. Yes. <laughs> you want to try? Yes. Okay. For sure. Go ahead. Ga. Nice. Ja. Good. Da. Nice. Ba. Perfect. Za. Yay. Gotcha, da, ba, za. Yay. Yay. Um, I had the honor of teaching this to Catherine three years ago. Catherine, you're my best student in that class. Oh, thank you, teacher. Don't tell the other students. I love them too. <laughs> they were all good, but Catherine's got some kind of seed for language, it happens. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Natalia? Okay. Wait, you're at the hello <laughs> water from mountain <laughs> water from the mountains right <laughs> yes nice to see you again okay, okay. try uh-huh good Me too. Ka, cha, yep. ta, pa, ta. perfect wow i just tortured Thank you Alia with this class <laughs> last month <laughs> I'm glad you came back. Uh, um, wait, Natalia, what languages do you speak? I speak a few languages, uh, actually Russian, uh -huh. of course, Turkish, uh -huh. Germany, and now I am also study study Italian. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, if you, uh, how's your Turkish? Are you fluent? Your last name's Turkish, right? I speak fluently and okay. I want as many students who teach he was. He was. I divorced. <laughs> oh, okay. I want as many students who speak other languages as possible so they can translate books into those languages too. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. Um okay. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Well, that's our time for today. Um it's now 8.30, so I want to honor everybody's time and finish class now. Um, are there any questions, quick questions before we go, before we end? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, well, stick with the class, please. Um, if you stick with the class, then you can come to the next Mixed Nuts term and I can show you off to, um, to the to get you Michael um, if you want if it's fun for you and um, and you can learn a lot faster in the the books if you if you have this knowledge because you won't be as confused in class so we'll hold our next class next uh, Monday what is that the seventh of November um, where I am at least I think everyone else. I don't know. Um, and yeah, we'll continue with this. We'll review what we um, learned in this class, the first column, and we'll continue forward. And we'll just keep going until everyone's got it. And if everyone gets it, then we'll start reading. And if everyone reads, then I don't know, we'll study a book. Um, and then there'll be the next term, mixed nuts, and then you can study 10 books at once, literally. Okay. Okay. If you have questions, um, 
you can email me. Let me put my email in the chat. Okay. Um, it's the positive word at gmail.com. You can also email Nick, um, as many of you did for the class. Mm, mm. If, I can, if you have complaints about me, you can email Nick. <laughs> His jokes are horrible. Nick already knows that, okay? You don't have to tell him. All right. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, translators. Yay! So I'll see you same time, um, Monday, November 7th. And we'll, oh yeah, we're gonna do Monday through Thursday. Unless it's too much for everybody, then we can cut down or something, but we'll try it the first week and then we'll see how it goes, okay? If you learn really fast, then maybe you don't need it or we can just start studying books if you want. I don't know, whatever you want, all right? Okay, thank you everybody, signing off. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you translators, you're amazing. Thank you. 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 Thank you.